How are group members socialized? Once a group forms, or once an individual joins a group, the process of socialization begins. This is how a person learns the values, norms, perspectives, and expected behaviors of a group, all of which enable them to successfully participate. It's often an informal process that occurs without our awareness. When you join a new friend group, it takes time to learn who everyone is, how they interact, what's expected of you, and so on. In organizations, the process tends to be a bit more formal and intentional. We might attend an official new employee orientation program after we're hired. Group socialization involves a number of variables. We'll focus on three of them here. Roles, norms, and cohesion. When people are effectively socialized, they fit in because they understand and adopt the norms and values of the group. A role is a set of expected behaviors and standards for each group member occupying a given position within a group. These expectations can be formal or informal. Examples of formal roles in academia include professor, student, department chair, and dean. Examples of informal roles include the friend that plays the mediator when a conflict arises or the colleague that doesn't mind stepping in when someone is absent. One way to categorize roles is according to their function. Instrumental roles help the group achieve tasks. They get things done. Without these positions, the group would not be able to reach its goals. The coaches and players are instrumental to a sports team's success, for example. Expressive roles, on the other hand, provide emotional support and maintain morale. The fans in the stands or the parents who attend their children's athletic events, for instance. They're not essential to group operations, but they certainly play a role in its success by attending to the human component. Group norms are sets of rules or expectations for group members. Again, these norms can be formally or informally established. Formal norms are usually written and shared with members explicitly, such as the expectations described in an employee handbook or student code of conduct. Informal norms are often expressed more subtly, and we learn them by observing others over time. In your family and friend groups, there are ways of engaging with one another. Everything from how you greet one another, how you speak to one another in conversation, how much detail you share with them, and so on. All these ways of interacting are informal norms. Because humans are not machines, and because many other factors influence our behavior, we do not always follow the established group norms. When we violate these expectations, the outcomes we experience shape our future behavior. Sometimes other group members will pressure us to conform and use the techniques we learned about in the previous lecture. Other times, they may punish us by avoiding us, isolating us from others, gossiping about us. In the U.S., extreme violations, such as criminal offenses, are punishable by fines and incarceration. In some states and in other nations, some of these violations may be punishable by death. Group cohesion includes the forces that push group members closer together and unite them. Members in highly cohesive groups feel a sense of commitment to the group's goals, are proud of their group, know each other well, and are engaged in its activities. We often see it displayed in sports teams and startup companies. Generally, highly cohesive groups outperform less cohesive groups. However, too much cohesion can lead to bad group decisions, and there are plenty of other factors that affect group performance. The importance of group cohesion varies across cultures. In collectivistic cultures, it's a key value. People focus on maintaining social harmony, cooperation, and interpersonal relations. In individualistic cultures, however, people value unique individual contributions and focus more on building their own knowledge and skills. These differences in values affect how leaders are expected to behave and how members deal with conflict in these cultures, among many other things. Now that you're familiar with what a group is, why we join groups, and how members are socialized. In the next section, we'll switch gears and focus on how the presence of other people influences an individual's behavior through processes like social facilitation, social loafing, and de-individuation.